Hello, in this video we're going to go over problem A5 from IMO 2019. This is a shortlisted problem from IMO 2019, which means it's a problem that was proposed to appear in the IMO, but it didn't make it to the IMO. Okay, so here is the problem. The problem is asking us to prove an equality where x1 through xn are different real numbers. And the equality is the sum i goes from 1 to n of the product j is not equal to i of 1 minus xi xj divided by xi minus xj. Okay, so the first thing that I did was I wrote down a few of these terms for n equals 2, n equals 3, and so on. And I was able to prove it for n equals 2, n equals 3. I won't go over the details of those because th those are pretty much computations. But at some point, I realized that really what I need to do is to show that when I do the taking the common denominator, the numerator and denominator, everything cancels. In the denominator, if you look at the sum, you will have xi minus xj and you have that for every i that is not equal to j if you take the common denominator you will get the product of xi minus xj and in this case j i is not equal to j which is to say i is less than j in the numerator you will get a polynomial this would be a polynomial of x1 through xn so the first thing that I want to do is to make sure that in fact the numerator has a factor of xi minus xj. How do you show that there is a factor of xi minus xj in the numerator? If you have a polynomial, let's say p of x equals x squared minus 3x plus 2. p of 1 is equal to 0. Because of that, we know that there's going to be a factor of x minus 1. So in fact, this, is, this can be factored as x minus 1 times x minus 2. So what I can do is something similar. I will have to show that the numerator has a factor of x1 minus x2, which means if I substitute x1 by x2, I will get 0. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to first clear the denominator, x1 minus x2. I'll multiply both sides by x minus x2. And then I will show that if I substitute x1 by x2, I will in fact get 0 in the numerator. So let's multiply both sides by x1 minus x2 and similarly for every xi minus xj I will uh, argue that there is a factor of xi minus xj in the numerator okay so this one is j is not equal to i 1 minus xi xj on top divided by xi minus xj at the bottom this is equal to x1 minus x2 times p x1 through xn divided by the product of xi minus xj. So at this point, I haven't really done anything. I just multiplied both sides by x1 minus x2. i is less than j. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel x1 minus x2. On the left, if, if i is not 1 or 2, there is no factor of x minus, x1 minus x2 at the bottom. So I'm going to break this up into three different terms i equals 3 to n x1 minus x2 times the product of 1 minus xi xj divided by xi minus xj and this is j is not equal to i plus if i is equal to 1 i have a factor of x1 minus x2 on top and that cancels with the denominator so i will get the product of 1 minus x1 xj j goes from uh, 2 to n divided by the product of x1 minus xj and this one also goes from 2 to n on top you get at the bottom x1 minus x2 cancels so we get the product of x1 minus xj j is not 1 or 2 so it starts from 3 goes to n plus the next term, we will have the product of 1 minus x1 xj, x2 xj in this case. j is not 1 divided by x1 minus x2 cancel, so we get a negative sign because we have x2 minus x1. And this guy gives us x2 minus xj. In this case, j is not 1 or 2. Now, if I substitute, and on the right, I get the p of x1 through xn divided by product of xi minus xj 
and we will get i is less than j greater than or equal to 1 less than or equal to n and i comma j is not 1 comma 2. Now if I substitute x2 by x1 we get this term is going to be 0 this term and this term are actually end up going to be the exact same thing we get the product of 1 minus x1 xj divided by and this one is j equals 2 to n divided by the products I'm replacing every x2 by x1 so doesn't nothing really happens in the first term x1 minus xj minus every x2 is replaced by x1 so we get the product of 1 minus x1 xj j is not 1 divided by the product of x1 minus xj j is not 1 or 2 and that is exactly 0 so what that means is that p p of x1 through xn is a multiple of x1 minus x2 and of course similarly for every i and j we have a factor of xi minus xj so similarly xi minus xj divides this polynomial of n variables for every i not equal to j so what that means is that the numerator is a multiple of the denominator which means the entire expression that they gave us is in fact a polynomial so therefore what they gave us the sum i equals 1 to n the product j not equal to i 1 minus xi xj over xi minus xj is a polynomial now the next thing I want to show is that this is in fact a constant polynomial so that's not very difficult to see there are multiple ways of seeing that but one way that I thought about this was this if you look at this polynomial the numerator and the denominator we're gonna compare their degrees so if you look at the numerator so let's say the degree in terms of x1 okay so there are a bunch of terms that do not have x1 and the rest of the terms that do have x1 are going to have the same number of x1 compared to the number of x1s at the bottom so if there's an x1 on top there's also an x1 at the bottom okay so what we have is this we have p of x1 through xn divided by the product of x uh, i minus xj now on top and at the bottom as we saw here the degrees are either the same or the degree of the numerator is a smaller so degree of p is less than or equal to the degree of the bottom product of xi minus xj but it is a polynomial so that that can only happen if the whole thing is a constant because if you look at p of x1 through xn that is equal to a polynomial times the product of xi minus xj degree of this one plus degree of that one degree of this plus degree of that is equal to degree of this one but we know that the degree of p is less than or equal to degree of r so that can only happen if degree of q is zero which means this would have to be a constant so that what we get is that this expression that they gave us the sum i equals 1 to n the product j is not equal to i x1 minus xi xj divided by xi minus xj is a constant at this point I thought I'm basically done however it was still a little bit tricky to figure out what constant this is going to end up being I thought about maybe finding the leading coefficient but it wasn't really easy to find the leading coefficient and at some point I realized okay I have to plug in some values for xi to be able to evaluate this because if I can evaluate this expression for one value of x1 through xn 
then I know what that constant polynomial would be. So the simplest thing that I thought about was to replace xi's by nth roots of unity. Because if you do that, then xi times xj are easy to evaluate, and xi minus xj's are also not that difficult to evaluate. Okay, so let xi be omega to the power of i, where omega is a primitive nth root of unity. So what that means is that omega is cosine of 2 pi over n plus i sine of 2 pi over n. And maybe to not confuse these, this i with the other i, I'm going to replace that by k. Now, if I look at the product of 1 minus xk xj, this would give me 1 minus omega to the power of k plus j. Most of the times, this would be equal to 0 for some j. So if I look at 1 minus omega 1, omega to the power of n minus 1, this would give me 1 minus omega to the power of n, um, which is 0. If I look at 1 minus omega squared, omega to the power of n minus 2, that would give me 1 minus omega to the power of n, which is also 0. So if I look at these numbers, omega to the power of n minus 1 and omega to the power of 1, that would give me 1 minus omega to the power of n, which is also 0. So for every i, I'm able to find a j that the 1 minus x i x j would be 0, except for the very last one. On this, so if k is not equal to n minus k for all k, then that product, the product of 1 minus xk times xj becomes 0. So what does that mean? It means if n is odd, then we get 0. Then the product of 1 minus xk xj is equal to 0. Uh, and this k is between 1 and n minus 1. For the last one, it is not possible. This is equal to 0 when j is not equal to k. For k equals 1 all the way to n minus 1. For the very last one, if I look at the product of j equals 1 to n minus 1, 1 minus xk xj, I would get product of j equals 1 to n minus 1, Oh, and this one is xn. So this is xn, 1 minus omega to the power of n plus j, which is product of 1 minus omega to the power of j, j equals 1 to n minus 1. And if you look at the bottom, the product of xn minus xj, that's the product of omega to the power of n minus omega to the power of j, which is the product of 1 minus omega to the power of j, j equals 1, 2, and minus 1. Okay, so this is the term that all of them are going to have. So the ratio is 1. So the ratio for k equals n is 1. So all of them have this term of 1. If n is odd, then this is the only term that we have. We get 1. However, if n is even, then we would have one more term. We'd have another term as well, the product of 1 minus xn over 2 xj divided by product of xn over 2 minus xj. And this one is again j not equal to n over 2 plus 1. This is what we have. Now if I substitute xj by again omega to the power of j, I would get the product 1 minus omega to the power of n over 2 plus j, this j is not n over 2, divided by product of omega to the power of n over 2 minus omega to the power of j, which is equal to, and again j is not equal to n over 2. So now let's see what we get here. Omega to the power of n over 2 is negative 1, because omega to the power of n is 1, and omega to the power of n minus n over 2 is not 1. So we get the product of 1 plus omega to the power of j divided by, this is negative 1 minus omega to the power of j, j is not n over 2, so that's equal to 
every term is a is negative one and we have exactly n minus one terms but we know that n is even so this is negative one so we have a negative one and we have also one from the previous one so we get zero so zero if n is even so that tells me that because it's a constant and because for these particular values of xi's we get these constants of 0 and 1 the whole expression must be 0 or 1 for uh, for the cases when n is even or n is odd if you like this video you're going to like the other videos on my channel I have a lot of videos like this so make sure to check those out and I will see you in the next video